Every second in every day, one person is infected by tuberculosis somewhere in the world. Every four seconds each day, one person becomes a TB patient somewhere in the world. There will be more than 85,000 new people infected with TB and another 20,000 or more would be TB patients. Every 15 seconds, a TB patient somewhere in the world dies. This minute, four persons will die of TB somewhere in the world. But do you know that TB can be completely cured? That it is preventable? Life is like a dewdrop. When it will fall is uncertain. Yet, how can we keep looking at thousands, millions, and tens of millions of lives like dewdrops, fall off, form rivers, and flow into the sea with no prospect of survival even for a moment when it sits on a blade of grass? Why should this happen? Sadly, 95% of the world's TB patients live in developing countries like ours. Today, 25% of those who die from curable diseases every year are in the developing world. It is also significant that 75% of these deaths from TB are those in the economically productive age groups. And the number of TB deaths among the young and adults are greater than deaths from other diseases. That's not all. TB is the main cause of death among women in a single year. Why should this happen? Skeletons from the Stone Age and mummies from pyramids have proved that TB has a very long history. The old epidemic known as white fever that spread across countries wiping out whole villages, destroyed millions of human lives. Unable to control this epidemic, people fled from their ancestral villages. Ignorance of the disease had established it as a fatal one. After extensive and dedicated research and high-risk experiments, German scientist Robert Koch discovered that tuberculosis was caused by a bacteria. This changed the whole outlook on the disease. Yet, inventing a drug to cure the disease was difficult. Without proper medication, the only acceptable alternative was prevention by quarantining TB patients. This often meant a total dislocation from their family, relatives, and society. The mental trauma this isolation caused to those patients and their families was considerable.
The Valisara Chest Hospital, established in 1937, is one example of an institution for quarantining of TB patients in Sri Lanka. In those days, there were thousands of patients as inmates, and medication available was never enough, say the record. Quarantining of TB patients was considered necessary to prevent the spread of the disease and also to provide the patients with a nourishing meal to help them develop greater immunity. Exposing the patients to the morning sunlight was to help destroy the germ. In effect, their fate was in their own hands. Their religious and spiritual needs were adequately provided for in the sanatorium. The drug streptomycin as a cure for TB was found after over 60 years in 1944 through the untiring efforts of a few international scientists. The number of TB patients in the world dropped drastically with the introduction of this drug. And for the first time, the spread of TB was controlled. Yet, even with very effective drugs that could cure TB, One third of the world's population, that is 1.7 billion people, are infected by TB even today. In simple terms, one out of every three persons have been infected by tuberculosis. And every year, about 8 million people in the world become TB patients. Each year, more than 2 million lives are lost to the world. How is it then that TB, which is completely curable, still destroys such a large number of lives? It is said that although cures for tuberculosis advanced far ahead of all other modern technology, Today, it lags behind in terms of human lives lost. <laughs> there are many reasons for the spread of TB in the world. Some countries failed to identify TB patients. There wasn't enough attention paid to prevention. Patients neglected their medication, and those needing it suffered due to constraints in drug transportation and lack of finance. Another reason was the social stigma attached to tuberculosis. More than all those impediments is the link HIV AIDS has to TB that allows for a catastrophe. One third of all those who died of AIDS in the world died of TB. Although TB is considered a disease among the poor, anyone at any social level could get infected with TB. Religion, caste, creed, age limits, and gender provide no barriers. Many philosophers, artists, and politicians have lost their lives to tuberculosis. Why should this happen? The difference between numbers and men is immense. 
Isn't it possible that someone near and dear to us has TB at this moment? This is an indication that some near relative could fall victim to tuberculosis in the near future. The only guarantee that can prevent yourself or me from contracting TB is to destroy the disease-causing germ. <laughs> that could only be done by identifying the sick and curing them. For this, you have to be a supportive partner. Today, we have in our country the most effective drugs ever used in the world against TB. In our country, the most important factor in controlling TB is to provide motivation for patients to continue their medication till they are completely cured. Patients not taking the prescribed drugs in their right combination and strengths for the prescribed period could suffer drastic consequences. This is because discontinuation or wrong combinations of drugs allow the TB bacillus to develop resistance to the drugs used and thereby make those drugs ineffective. Multidrug resistant TB is a new variation to the common disease, which is difficult to cure and the patient infected with it can infect others with this more dangerous form of TB. The threat grows manifold with the prospect of the disease being airborne. Comparatively, the multidrug resistant TB is high on the list of life-threatening diseases. This is because only about 5% of those infected with multidrug resistant TB could be cured even with medication. Another constraint is the very high cost of the drugs required for treatment of multidrug resistant TB, which is about 100% more than those used for common TB. In the past, quarantining of TB patients was due to lack of effective drugs. And today, once again, if we have to quarantine multidrug resistant TB patients, it would be a sad indictment on humanity to return to that primitive practice and hide them away from society. However, if the number of multidrug resistant TB patients increased, the government may be compelled to resort to that measure. And if the patient quarantined is a near relative, then we would all realize the real danger of this disease. Is it possible that we are witnessing the re-emergence of tuberculosis? How can we meet the threat of this new and more dangerous form of TB caused mainly by neglect of medication? How can this situation be changed? Whose support should be enlisted to effect this change? The initial responsibility 
is the patients. That is because regular treatment is the first guaranteed form of prevention. Six months of regular and prescribed treatment cures a patient infected for the first time. But it is also true that taking medicine for six long months is too tedious and troublesome. Therefore, it is necessary and important that members of the family of patients and the community support patients to continue with their medication. That perhaps is the support you should render. The political and the administrative system should pay immediate attention to the effective prevention of this disease. The duty and responsibility of preventing this disease lies not only with the health service, but also with society. By contributing to the eradication of tuberculosis that could not only affect our near and dear ones, but the whole of society as well, you and I would ensure that Sri Lanka is totally free from TB.